Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to our Chris Dingle service. My name's Emma, and this is Reverend Andy. Hi, everyone. We're really sorry we can't be with you in person this year, but we're going to have a great time anyway. So as is normal at our Chris Dingle service, we've got a Advent set of candles to light and I'm going to hand over to Elise at home who's going to light that for us now. Well, thanks, Elise, for lighting those candles. Let's take a moment just to pray as we begin our time together. Father, we thank you that you call Jesus the light of the world, that you bring light into our lives through him. And we pray that as we celebrate this Chris Single service, you would be with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're now going to sing together while shepherds watched. for our Bible story and we're going to watch a video called The Unexpected Christmas. Have you ever wondered what we might see if we could pull back the curtain of time to that very first Christmas? If we could, I imagine the story began in heaven something like this. God was looking over heaven's balcony one day, shaking his head at all the wrong things people were doing down on earth. Oh man, this isn't quite what I had in mind when I created Earth. I feel so far away from my kids down there. Why? It's just hard to be friends with people when you don't like what they're doing. I think it's time. Time for what, Lord? Time for us to step in. Shall we read as a army, Lord? Can't you see what we said? No, I don't think we should send an army. Maybe just one person. What person? Brilliant! They won't be expecting that! 
Lord, we are sending just one person. Let to be someone very powerful and very strong. Because there's tons of people down there. No, they don't have to be strong. They'll be going as a newborn baby. A newborn baby? baby? Brilliant! They won't be expecting that! Lord, this plan is rather risky. A newborn human baby is small and weak. This baby must be born to people who will protect him. Maybe a great ruler or mighty king? Actually, I was thinking I could send him to a young peasant girl whose heart is beautiful and full of courage. A peasant girl? Brilliant! They won't be expecting that! My lord, I see you're planning to take Earth by surprise. No one will be expecting a newborn baby born to a humble villager. But what good can a baby do? This will not just be any baby. I'm sending in the Prince of Heaven in disguise. The Prince of Heaven? Our Prince? Your son? Please, I won't be expecting that. Lord, this is too risky. Sending the Prince in disguise is a tiny baby, born not to kings, but to humble villagers. Surely our Prince cannot be born in a cottage. He must be born in a palace. You're right. He shouldn't be born in a cottage. Phew. He'll be born in a stable. Those who are lucky will find him, and his mission will bring all people closer to me, even if they do something really wrong. When the prince is done, nothing will get between them and my love. Can we leave some clues for the people looking? Like in the stars? Clues in the stars? Sure, why not? We can make one huge one that points to him. Can we sing for him? Yes, can we sing? God looked at their hopeful faces, and his heart was touched by their love for the fence. All right, you can sing. Yay! But not in front of the whole world. That would just be weird. And no kings or rulers. How about we sing for some chicken? That's a lonely job. Those blokes could do with some cheering up. Brilliant. They won't be expecting that. You know the rest of the story. An angel visited a humble girl with a courageous heart and told her the good news. She will have a baby and he will be the Prince of Heaven who would help Earth to be close to God again. As planned, the baby was born in a stable about as far from a palace as you can get. A group of wise men noticed some strange clues in the stars. They packed their balloons and followed the star right to a baby. And of course, a bunch of lonely shepherds were guiding their sheep when all of a sudden the sky was lit up by a thousand of angels singing. Nobody would ever expect that. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that short little video from St Paul's Church in Auckland in New Zealand. I'm very grateful for them who've put that uh, together and spent all that time recording it with the children from the church. Well, as we head towards Christmas Day, I wonder how many things you have on your list that you expect uh, to happen, expect to be able to organise for Christmas Day and all the celebrations that surround it. For us, we've had all sorts of traditions through the years of doing similar things each year. And um, uh, we love going around looking at the uh, lights all around the Bristol area, the decorations on people's houses, and it always brings a smile to our face. And there's a sense of anticipation, isn't there, when we lead up to Christmas, a sense of anticipation of seeing what amazing decorations there might be on people's houses but also anticipation about seeing family members or opening presents or opening uh, our Christmas cards. And this year is gonna be very different, isn't it? Where we're not able to see so many people because we need to keep COVID safe. Now, 
I wonder if there are some things though that are unexpected. Now, um, over the years, I've uh, had a few unexpected presents and um, we've had a few unexpected things happen on our Christmas Day and New Year celebrations. One Christmas, I unwrapped this present, I think I was about 12 years old, and there was a sponge and a piece of soap. And I was a little bit disappointed. It wasn't really quite the sort of thing I was expecting. Then another time I got this bag, which I opened up thinking it was gonna be some fantastic sweets. When I opened it, it looked like pieces of coal. What a bizarre thing to get as a present, but it turned out actually they were sweets made to look like coal. Now, the first Christmas when Jesus was born really was unexpected. And God coming as a tiny baby, born into that mucky stable. And it wasn't the entrance that people were expecting in Israel. It wasn't the entrance that they were expecting of their God and King to come and be born in such humble uh, surroundings. But is it a self-contained event? Well, no. The church celebrates Jesus born because it is such a momentous uh, moment for us. Jesus, God in the flesh, born uh, for us to come and show God's love in a personal way, coming and stepping into the muck and the darkness of our world to bring his hope, his love. And it wasn't a one-off event that was unexpected in some respects because the prophet Isaiah had spoken some 700 years before Jesus was born and said that God would come, born um, from a virgin mother, a tiny baby born in humble surroundings. And Isaiah uses this name, Emmanuel, which means God with us. And that is the name that Jesus uses for himself, that the early church used for him, God with us. We all try, don't we, to live a good life as best as we can, but we make mistakes. And those mistakes separate us from God. Jesus came as that baby to show a way, to help us restore that relationship with God our Father. That message of hope is what we celebrate at Christmas time as Christians. And the church celebrates each year. And uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, one of these before, but if you haven't, it is called a Christingle. And if you'd like to make your own one, I've put some instructions in the YouTube post for you and uh, with all the things that you'll need to make one. And uh, the Christingle is uh, something that churches have used for, for many, many years as a means to remind us to celebrate what Jesus has done. And uh, so if you take a look at my orange, I've got some four cocktail sticks with uh, some really nice sweets on there. Sometimes people put nuts and raisins on there as well. And those four cocktail sticks represent the four seasons that we uh, live through each year, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And then we have the uh, orange itself representing the world, God's creation, the beautiful world that we live in. It's a moment for us to remember how amazing the world is that we live in. And then we have the candle on top, which symbolizes Jesus, the light of the world. And when lit, and we're gonna light them in a few moments, when lit, we see the beauty of that light. We see perhaps the warmth that that brings. And that reminds us something of Jesus's character and what he's done for us. And that links finally with the red ribbon around the outside, which symbolizes Jesus's blood shed on the cross for us, to make a way for us to be forgiven, as I've said earlier on, for us to have a relationship of love with God and for us to know his presence each day and his peace and his hope. So I'm gonna get some of my family members up on stage and we're gonna light our Christingles. If you've made one at home, maybe this is the moment to light it. But uh, if you're not going to do it now, well, make one later and uh, light them together as a family at home. Hi, Elise and Emma, come on up. Right, so we've got our three Christingles. Can't see yours, Emma. There we go. Excellent. I'm going to light my Christingle now and, um, and then I'll pass the light on to everyone else.
So just like that, Jesus uh, tells us that he's the light of the world, but he also asks us to be the light of the world, that we might pass on his light and his lo love and his hope to other people that we meet. And uh, so let's pray as we just have our three Chris Dingles here on screen. Father God, we thank you that you sent Jesus as the light of the world to be with us, to bring us light and hope and peace. And I pray this Christmas time that we would, all of us, experience your love in some way. For those who are feeling sad at this time because they've lost loved ones or they can't see family members, we pray, Lord, that you would give your peace and your comfort. And we pray also, Lord, that we'd be able to celebrate with great joy the gift of your son, being born in that unexpected way in that stable 2,000 years ago. Bless us, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to sing together our final song, which is Silent Night, uh, which will come up on screen now. everyone. If you'd like to join us on Christmas Day, we'll be meeting together at 10am on Zoom and we'll send you the link if you contact us on our Facebook page. Thanks Emma. So let me pray a blessing as we close our time together today. May the joy of the angels, the wonder of the shepherds and the peace of the Christ child fill your hearts and homes this Christmas time and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon us 
and upon all those we love and pray for now and forever. Amen. Amen. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.